This is ADT 1160U, Digital Communication Technologies. The title for this particular video clip is Connectivism. Before the Internet era, there were only a few ways to have access to information. How we lived and functioned in school and society was quite different from what it is today. When human beings looked for information, it was either available from a person's mouth or from printed or audio material. If one found a good educational program on TV that was relevant to something he or she was doing, we said, it was luck. At that time, it was not well perceived to go back to school as an adult, and people rarely changed careers. Only a minority of the population would willingly change career, and usually, if someone went back to school as an adult, it was because they had lost their jobs. It was a time when knowledge didn't change rapidly, and despite advanced theories of what learning could be, such as Hebbian theory, theories of advanced learning remain theories. Hebbian theories, for example, was introduced in 1949 by Donald Hebb, who explained that cells that fire together have a tendency to build strong connections and evolve together. In the mid-1990s, the Internet became available to the population, and there were opportunities to engage on a global scale in many formal and informal learning situations, which helped people develop skills and competencies to make them more employable. Many people were spending more and more time working over the Internet, making contacts, or even better, connecting themselves to new elements of information and new people. Meanwhile, the logic of knowledge was changing, and most people didn't see it coming. This was the premise of connectivism. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. What is connectivism or connective knowledge? What are the underlying principles? Explain the role of emergence and interpretation in connectivism. In fact, what Internet technologies have done is that they have provided human beings with a lot of information, so much information, that the issue now is who knows what to do with all this information? There is no need to memorize any of it. All we need is to know what information to get and how to get it and what to do with it. One must admit that basic knowledge is important, but that basic knowledge is not always the same. In some cases, the learner really has to know what information to get. For example, how many tablespoons in one third of a cup. In other cases, the learner simply has to know how to find the information, that is, where to look and who to speak to in order to answer questions, and chances are the answer to the questions would be much more complex and include tasks to accomplish and problems to solve. This is called distributed knowledge that can lie inside the collective intelligence or inside a multi-agent system, which we can also call connective knowledge. The first case is usually what we face in school, and the latter case is what we are usually faced to in real life, although both times of knowledge are not mutually exclusive. At the end of the day, if we want to perform well in a job, we must know the subject matter that is the object of our work, and we must know how to find more information on it when new situations arise. Let's look in this connective knowledge theory in more details. George Siemens describes connectivism as the integration of principles explored by chaos, network, and complexity, and self-organization theories. Learning is a process that occurs within nebulous environments of shifting core elements, not entirely under the control of the individual. Learning, defined as actionable knowledge, can reside outside of ourselves within organizations or databases, for example, is focused on connecting specialized information sets and the connections that enable us to learn more are more important than our current state of knowing. What do you think this means? Can you think of concrete examples that would help explain this statement? According to Siemens, Connectivism is driven by the understanding that decisions are based on rapidly altering foundations. New information is continually being acquired. The ability to draw distinctions between important and unimportant information is vital. 
the ability to recognize when new information alters the landscape based on decision made yesterday is also critical. This is a difficult concept to understand, but let's look at the principles that underlie the definition of connectivism. These are the principles of connectivism. Learning and knowledge rests in a diversity of opinion. What do you think that means? How do we get there? Learning is a process of connecting specialized nodes of information sources. How do we do this? Learning may reside in non-human appliances. Now I must wonder, what are non-human appliances? Do you have an answer to this? Capacity to know more is more critical than what is currently known. Nurturing and maintaining connections is needed to facilitate continual learning. How do we do this? How much time do we have to spend doing that? That's another question. Ability to see connections between fields, ideas, and concepts is a core skill. Currency, which is accurate, up-to-date information, is the intent of all connectivist learning activities. Decision-making is itself a learning process. Choosing what to learn and the meaning of incoming information is seen through the lens of a shifting reality. While there is a right answer now, it may be wrong tomorrow due to alterations in the information climate affecting the decision. Take some time to reflect on these principles. A network is a system composed by nodes and connections between the nodes. A node can be directly or indirectly connected to another node. The nodes are elements of information and the connections are ways for that information to flow inside the system. Think of a brain with the neurons and the dendrites, which we commonly call connections between the neurons. A network works in a similar way. Inside a system, there has to be data. Data is basically small units of raw elements. There also has to be information. Information is data with intelligence applied. There has to be knowledge. Knowledge is information in context. And there has to be meaning, which is knowledge understood in all of its nuances and implications. Now, what do we find in networks? We learn in networks because the system is in constant evolution. Some things change rapidly, some things change slowly. We find a variety of items in a network. We find content, which is data or information. We find interaction, which is tentative connection forming. We find static nodes, which is stable knowledge structure. We find dynamic nodes, which is continually changing based on new information and data. We also find self-updating nodes, which is nodes that are tightly linked to their original information source, resulting in a high level of currency or up-to-date information. We also find emotive elements, and these are emotions that influence the prospect of connection and hub formation. All of this is subject to the interpretation of the learner, or how the learner construes his or her understanding of the system. The presence of new nodes does not guarantee that they will be understood inside the network. Neither does it ensure that there will be any learning because we cannot know for sure if there is a node or if the node has been connected or how it has been connected. However, when new connections arise, the node is encoded by how it is connected to other elements in a network. This is how the learner comes to understand its meaning. And yet, that meaning can change depending on the situation, on the nature of the system, and on how learners organize the system. This has an impact on how they know the world. Whatever action or interaction occurs inside the system creates the emergence of a phenomenon. According to Stephen Downs, in an introduction to connective knowledge, emergence is the result of interpretation. As he describes it, Emergence is interpretation applied to connections. Now we can see this in two ways. We can perceive a set of connections linking a group of entities as a whole in their movement. 
is like a series of dominoes. When one domino topples another and so on, and we look at them in a distance, we notice that there's a wave. This is an emergent phenomenon. It is not the dominoes themselves. Same for the interaction between two mores. When one more is put on top of the other, there is a spider that is created. The spider is not there, but it appears from the interaction between two mores. We can also perceive something as a distinct whole and interpret it as connections. For example, when we see someone on TV, we can see that we are looking at pixels that are being triggered by a mechanism of video broadcasting, and the image we see has a link between the image and the object of origin, which is the actor himself. Sometimes even we can develop shared meanings when people in a system learn to view nodes and the connections between the nodes in a certain way, such as in a community of practice. The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. What do you think are the challenges in understanding the value of connectivism as a learning theory? While networks are simple, they are composed of complex elements. What is complex about them? Why is it like that? Explain how inference, emergence, and the development of shared meanings are concepts that refer to learning.